today is July 27th, 2017, and I have my usual Thursday webinar. I moved it to the morning. In the evening, I can't even speak. Now I seem to be able to speak a little bit better. And today is the time where I speak for myself. And for a change, I didn't post things around, uh, but it is posted there on uh, humancolony.org. Uh, just click on jump page and it's there and the invitation participation is there. So join me. Now it's uh, 1.30 p p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's just convenient for me and people ask to keep it regular. So today nobody has come because I didn't post it in, in other places. So please come. If you want to see it, check the jump page on humancalling.org. The main thing I wanted to speak today is the workshop. It's uh, exactly a week till the workshop is started on August 3rd. And uh, it goes for five days until August 8th. And we still have a few spaces left. Some spaces left are not sold and some places were sold, but people then had to cancel. And uh, some of that is, all of that is guided by the uh, spirits uh, one way or another. So we invite more people to come and uh, the current price is $600, which includes lodging, good food, including uh, vegetarian and non-gluten-free gluten food options, and, and the classes and the participation. So all together, you only have to get there and we will pick you up from Buffalo Airport uh, on the August 3rd. It's included too. On other days, you know, we will have to, we will have to pay for the transportation. And it is in a, a Christian camp. At the, we have the whole camp, camp for us and um, it's forest, a creek, and um, it might be raining a little bit. So it's kind of warm and raining at the same time. Um, and it's a big, um, there is a big hole there, air conditioned, we, we, are, we are told, and there is uh, wood cabins which house maybe 10 people in the room. It's like bank beds, two floor bank beds, uh, foam matrices, and you bring your own blankets, or we, 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 some people bring extra blankets for you. So if you are interested, contact me. If you can't afford it, but you can afford a part of it, talk to me and maybe we can arrange the um, uh, discount for you. You know, I'm that flexible at the moment. Um, so we right now we have 24 participants who are coming and uh, some people fly, fly from Europe. Uh, some people fly from far apart, far from the workshop. It's in upstate New York, near Buffalo, Niagara, Niagara area. And it's a nice uh, natural place that is a nice drop in the plains there. It's, um, it's a big plain and near Leechworth Park, it, it kind of drops a lot. So it's a big ge geomagnetic area of, in of interest. And it's close to Jim. So Jim and I will be teaching. And uh, the main idea behind the workshop is uh, the work on the earth grid, earth grid to help ascension by uplifting their, their electrobiomagnetic sphere of the earth. And we need collective effort for that. Let me do a little chanting. Um, Yeah. 
So yeah, that's how I was guided there. Yeah, we wanted to start some sort of classes, local classes, teaching schools, and uh, it all comes to money. We need to bring people together, and it's sort of a risk. You know, we have to rent a place, and usually they require payment up front. So, so I kind of win. I decided that we want to do it. There is an opportunity to do this, and um, the spirits and aliens have sent me helpers. I have a wonderful organizer team who helped me a lot, and I, I didn't know what to do. I I never been to such a workshop, so. So for me, it's a, a nice learning experience. I organized something to learn it. Uh, I guess it would be smarter to visit somebody else's workshop, but um, I guess it's just, uh, there is nothing around which would be like really attractive at the moment. I'm just not aware there is it's awareness problem and money problem also. It's, some of them are expensive. Usually they have it uh, by the major airport in uh, pretty areas, uh, in the peak season for the prices, and also in expensive hotels, and it's within the hotel. So, so then the price becomes like triple of what we charge. It's like thousands of dollars, and you also pay for the food. Uh, that's what I hear. I, you know, it's all kind of becomes restrictive, and um, so I, we looked around and found that good deal for the camp. It's pretty cheap per day and stuff, and uh, and there is a chef. Um, now, how to organize it? Um, basically, we have a schedule, and we have lots of helpers, so everybody who comes is, uh, is helping one way or another. So it's volunteer-based. I, I visited other events, which are like big, there was a big uh, Conscious Life Expo at Los Angeles. It's one of the major gatherings of uh, light workers, and it has a mixed. Uh, I had a mixed feeling there. I felt lonely and uh, confused. So they have so much. Um, it's expensive, relatively expensive. So, like uh, to get to, and you have to buy tickets in advance. And if you didn't buy, it's higher price. So, so it's kind of bites, and um, you know the doors are closed there. So. There is a, thousands of people walking between the doors and you have to show that you paid for this specific event or this kind of event. And just the, figuring out where you want to go and what do you want to try and what, what do you want to pay for is a, is a major challenge. I guess Westerners are well trained for that, but with my kind of light-minded, you know, you know, let's go somewhere and gather together, it's, it was uh, foreign to me. So scheduling was a hard thing. So somehow I sneak through into David Wilcox's um, uh, speech talk. And he encouraged like, all people from outside, let them in, let them in. And the guards didn't, didn't care, the volunteer guards, so they kind of followed him, which was great. So they let us in and we were able to hear to hear Wilcox and, and I had, had the chance to hug him. He was like, he's, instead of... He's one and a half hours, he spoke for about three hours, late at night, and then he spent another hour just, you know, hugging the line of people who wanted to hug him. So I was in the last, uh, you know, at, at, at the last, uh, the last person in the line, one before last, and uh, I was really surprised. He was fully energized. He wasn't tired at all. For me, like giving a big lecture and then, you know, answering questions and people just wanting your energy, wanting your attention. He was thrilled and um, easygoing. But he was kind of walled. So when I said, you know, I want to talk to you about science, he just a blank, complete protection. So I understand, I mean, he is that popular. I really like what he writes and uh, I like his ideas. I, um, Pretty much his ideas are most aligned with my ideas in science. I can't find another scientist who is that much far out into the area where I want to study. He is not a scientist by training, so his thinking is pretty sloppy, but his energy and interest is there and intuition is there. So what he does is to in intuit, channel the answers, and then 
pretend that they are scientifically justified. So, so he he's capable of collecting lots of information, reading lots of books, and intuitively grasp, grabbing the information. But then he presents it in a way which is uh, not rigid scientifically, but it's popular. So he is a great popularizer, and he has original ideas too. So, so altogether, he is the closest one. Uh, he studies. Um, he does study. That's that's the, the good word. Study. He studies the ascension, uh, the physics of ascension, metaphysics of ascension, aliens. Now he acknowledged publicly that he is into aliens. It was a big step for him. He was so popular-minded that until the crowd was ready, he pretended he doesn't know about aliens, which was I think was hypocritic, right? That's the word, hypocritic. But in any way, his, um, his passion is admirable. He is, he is great. And his intuition is admirable. Uh, he is always walking like a few years in front of me, so ahead of me. So when I read his books written like four years ago, that's where I am now. Like I'm catching up with him. So David Wilcock is great. And another one is um, Dan Winter. He is in many ways similar to Wilcock. He's pretending to be a scientist too. And uh, he's an engineer, of course. And um, uh, I only later discovered that what he said before makes a lot of sense. Yet there is some something in, uncatchable in, in his speech which makes it feel like it is a fakery that he doesn't know what he speaks about, or he doesn't fully understand what he speaks about. But when you kind of dig deeper, I think he has tons of right answers, tons like really great insight into the right nature of physics and metaphysics, of ascension, of biology, of <clears throat> uh, space-time, cosmos, and stuff like that. More suspicious is he says he claims that he understands gravity, which nobody understands. And I cannot even tell if that is right or not, but he has one universal answer, and he, which is uh, fractality. And he kind of, he is uh, just explaining the universe from fractal perspective, which I think is great, and I think it's the right approach. So these are the closest ones. So I, I have been to some events, workshops, and big, big events, like big... Uh, conferences. Uh, there is a Joshua Tree place here in, in um, California, about three hours from San Diego, between San Diego and Los Angeles. It's a, a funny place. It's pretty spiritually charged. Otherwise, I can't understand why would they do it in summer in the, in the desert. It's pretty hot there. But people just um, kind of tolerate there. They have big tents. And some people stay in... Uh, very expensive hotel there. Some people stay in a hot campground and it's just too hot for me, but I've been there and um, they continuously have either alien events or usually yoga and spiritual light worker kind of events. And usually an event lasts for like five days covering the weekend and days around. So I have been to those, so I have some experience. And in science we go to conferences, so I have been to big conference meetings. But what we do here is very much homemade. It's only 24 people, including organizers. And um, it's different in many ways, right? So initially I wanted to just to rent a, an Airbnb house, but um, then you think how you would uh, place so many people in the, in the bedrooms. You just don't have enough beds. And if, if you have enough beds, it's like, very tightly packed together, and usually it's only three toilets, and for 25 people, three toilets is a nightmare, right? You need, like, seven showers. So, the camp is a great answer. It's a great answer. And the price-wise, it's, it's comparable to Airbnb. The, you know, the drive from the airport is one and a half hours. It's just a little bit too much. Ideally, it would be, like, half an hour. So, we are looking for the next place to organize the next workshop. And apparently it falls in the cold time of the year. So warm time of the year, we can do it in the north. 
and the cold time of the year you should do it possibly in the south but um, I don't like Florida's the energy is like is not friendly to me I don't like Florida and the middle states south I don't like and San Diego so it's it you know the the, the south of um, of the west is uh, is expensive I would say unless you find something like around Phoenix I think Phoenix would be great uh, Sedona is like number one candidate to do the next workshop sometime maybe in I'm thinking maybe November because uh, December is uh, is um, there is something wrong about December like time wise I think November is better I don't know so I'll have to think December maybe even January so November to yeah December January maybe December January we need a place but because even in Phoenix it's it's pretty cold in January so it can be anywhere but the problem yeah I yeah, why we want to move it outside? It's for Jim to fly, for Jim to fly to that event, and just the flights in uh, January from Rochester is like almost impossible. There is so much snow coming from the lake. Every other day they cancel the flight. So, so that I guess it's a solvable problem. We can just um, we can just wait for the flight, and you know it's not it's close to airport, so it's not a big deal. So he can fly from Rochester whenever and then wherever. And other places, we just need, I guess, the places which are not closed by, by the snow. Because in the north, the snow is just is a beach. It's, uh, and I can't plan anything. It's, it's, it will be canceled, continuously canceled flights. So I think maybe the uh, warmer, so the south, like middle south of United States is acceptable. So what's the problem with Sedona? Sedona, there is no major airport there. So you have to drive from Phoenix and it's a, a hassle. I really want the people to be able to reach us without much hassle, like in one piece. And so you fly to Phoenix and then drive to Sedona. I, I don't know. You know. If you have like 30 people, how would they get there? It's just nightmare. Most of our light workers are, some of no not most some of our light workers are not capable of that complex planning and navigation i think that would be a little difficult but tell me if i'm wrong um and i don't really know where people are tell me where you are you know how to reach me right um the easiest way is on facebook search you know if you're not a member yet the group is called hucula private Hucola, H U C O L O private, and uh, you find me there, Max Rempel, and uh, you just Facebook message me. And the other way, max at hucola.org or max at humancolony.org, just send me an email. And you always can find me by going to humancolony.org and click on contacts. <laughs>
All right. So for me, it is a transformational experience. Last um, since I come came up with understanding, I want to do it. It's uh, me transforming into that workshop organizer and teacher shape, which is uh, I need to do harmonium and chant. I did chanting before, but now I can do it. I need to do it with 25 people so they can uh, to uplift them to certain vibration. I do my Reiki classes local. Uh, I did my Reiki classes mostly for Russians, but I also did them for um, English speaking people. And it's sort of organized. Uh, it's, uh, it works fine even with large crowd of with uh, that large crowd of 25 people, the castle is how do you keep them all together? It's one challenge. And I think we, we have the solutions for that. And then how do you uh, do attunements? Like, so you really need more healers to do more attunements. It's like hands-on work and you can do it. You cannot do it. Uh, fast you can do like half a minute each you have to like spend a few minutes really focusing on the person so the solution is i'm just telling you what i'm working on the solution is <clears throat> if you do it by, by yourself you do it all at once right it's a different energy it's like not personalized energy but it's wide energy and some people feel excluded when they do all at once. And even when you work on one-on-one, -on -one, some people don't get it. They just cannot tune into the right frequency, don't, they don't receive it. But when you do group, it's less personalized, but it still works. It's, it's possible to do group attunements. I did it um, and locally, so it's possible. A microphone really helps me. My, uh, I just the message is better delivered with the microphone. So I will have the microphone and the speaker, which will help me to tune people into a certain frequency and um, and uh, d help them to receive the, the downloads. So we'll do lots of uh, attunements there. It's like for every activity, we'll have the attunement. One is for Reiki and the galactic Reiki and the channeling and telepathy for alien watch for star watch we, we just do general meditation we don't plan that so what's the difference between reiki and galactic reiki um and reiki is practiced only by by earth people right and galactic reiki is practiced by you know the galactic people so there's a difference and uh, that information is channeled uh, right now. There are three of us. One person in Australia who does galactic Reiki channeling and Jim and I. And each of us has our own style of downloading it and teaching it. So uh, Jim will let the cur teach it. And uh, I'll just tell what, what I know. So I will teach it myself. Um, it's, you know, as you understand, because it's, you know, galaxy is big and it's like even bigger, right? It's, it's the universe. The universe is big. Uh, there are plenty of styles of galactic Reiki. My main uh, understanding how it works is through Jim. When Jim does galactic, does Reiki on me and then channels at the same time, channels an alien, then uh, I receive Reiki from that alien. So I am connected and I can learn. That's how you learn. One way of learning Reiki is by being treated by an alien. And I do meditations with uh, inviting aliens to treat me, so I have pretty good understanding how how they how they work. And I studied the theory too. There is um, a book on that, X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine by Adrian Dwyer. So I highly recommend it. It's available on Amazon for affordable price great book and um, yeah they are um, this do and his colleagues are the same people as um, X3 so so I'm very much uh, connected to them and I uh, I use my extraterrestrial kind of 
connection, spiritual connection and telepathic connection to download more of that. And um, the amount of teaching you will get there is limited. How much can you shift the person in five days <laughs> and, and then keep them functional after that, right? So, you know, we don't just, we don't want just to uplift you and let you hang there because, you know, we wouldn't be able to get home normally. So we have to uplift you, download stuff to you, and then bring you back to functional state and uh, let you absorb it and incorporate that later. So that's my understanding. So to do that, we'll do limited amount of actual instruction. We'll still do lots of instruction, but you know, how much can you learn in five days? We'll give you keys, keys to then explore yourself. And then the, the additional, the important part of the workshop is practice, right? Attunement and practice. Um, so it's instruction, attunement or initiation, same thing, attunement, initiation and practice. So So we'll do these three major parts. And, oh, yeah, I was trying to remember, what did I forget? You know, instruction, initiation, practice, what else is missing, right? And what missing is uh, discussion, right? So there will be lots of discussion as well. So we'll do our usual stuff. You already seen all of that online. So we do our classes. So essentially nothing will change. We will keep doing our classes. The only thing is that it will be hands-on. You can really touch us. We can touch you. It's uh, <laughs> We do it face-to-face -face now, right? So face-to-face, -face, but it would be local face-to-face. -face. In same locus, localized, location. Same place, physically together. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I go to the colony. I go it physically. Yes, physically. But do you remember? No. But here you will remember. Right? That's the difference. If you go with us to a workshop, it will be a physical experience which you will remember and you'll have physical evidence that you were there. <laughs> Just funny. All right. So, um, so practice. We'll have uh, five Reiki tables four or five, so uh, we'll have plenty of opportunity to put you on the table or have us, other people on the table and you work on them. So there will be like three major practice chunks where we'll take shifts and everyone will be able to experience receiving Usu Reiki. Usu is a classical one and classical Japanese earthly one and Galactic Reiki. Both of that you will experience. And Jim will be there teaching, healing, doing private sessions, and uh, socializing. I don't know, I'm not good in socializing. That's just my weak part. I guess I will be doing everything else except socializing. I will just do like uh, meditation and go teach and go meditate again. I never taught a workshop for five days in a row. It's just for me, is um, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I need to learn it. So my understanding is that for me, I would need to take lots of breaks and meditation. So I will meditate, go meditate, go back, teach, go meditate, eat, sleep, meditate. So there are... Uh, uh, six uh, showers there, three men, three, three women's, and uh, you know, women always have a, sh a waiting line in the shower, so so possibly will uh, when, when the men's room is available, I think they're all three in one room, so we'll just put a sign that's like available for women and allow women to go into, into the shower. There are also six toilets in that place there is like two toilets in the major hall we'll uh, we are renting two how do you say por porty parties por porty parties i think they're called portable toilets and there is like one more so for 25 people i think it's two, 
six, eight. Ten toilets is plenty. Uh, I think we should be good. And uh, there are air conditioners in major cabins. So it's going to be hot and, and rainy, which is funny. For Rochester, it's, it's okay. I guess rain comes from the... It's very green there. Very green. Rain comes from the lake, from the Ontario lake. Okay, um, so you will we'll have instruction, we'll basically have um, an hour of instruction for Usui Reiki, Jim and I will teach you, and we also have a, our teacher, uh, Barbara Carlton, she's always late, so I cannot guarantee you that she will come in time. She would, uh, in principle, never use a GPS system. And she will eventually get there, but I am not can guarantee she will get to the class. I say there is a good chance that she will get to the class. I ask her to come in the morning, and the class starts at 3 p.m. So there is a good chance she will get there. And uh, she has a great Reiki energy, so she will help teaching with attunements. And attunements, we just place hands on you and uh, do the download to you download of the Reiki program and so you have the key and then you can use it okay so she will help with the tournaments and I will ask her to touch everyone maybe at least you know I think we'll do like we'll uh, do the major download I will do like eight people Jim will do eight people Barbara will do eight people I think we'll have a couple more healers who are qualified, certified to do Reiki uh, attunement. So we'll do like, we'll divide all 24 people into groups and do the attunements. And then I'll ask Jim and Barbara to, I'll ask Barbara to touch everyone and uh, give an additional attunement. And what's uh, great about her in the addition, additional plus is that she is the sixth in the, sixth in the teaching line from the founder of Reiki, Mikao Usui. So, so you'll be attuned by, um, well, on the seventh in the list. In, in Reiki, it matters how far are you from the founder. You know, the Asian culture, they respect the lineage very much. So your lineage will look pretty good on paper. And uh, in terms of attunement too. It's funny, right? But, uh, we also had a blessing from Usui Mikao, Mikao Usui through Jim. So Jim channeled Mikao and uh, gave us the blessing. So and some sort of attunement too. So uh, in a spiritual sense, we have been connected directly to the power, which is great.
So my, we teach the main principles of Reiki, and the key, the main principle of Reiki is number one is making it positive, smile, make it positive, be a positive visor, and how to achieve it, how to uplift yourself and your recipient of Reiki, receiver. Your sender and there is a client receiver. So how do you uplift the receiver? So how to not worry, right? Don't worry, be happy. How to? So that's the main principle of Reiki. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> and it's a huge art. It's a huge science, and it goes beyond beyond science, beyond logic, beyond understanding. It's something which is requires <clears throat> a spiritual move which is beyond words, a spiritual move which is beyond words, but it will hold your hand physically, locally, in the physical, in the local, in the same location, in the locus. It will be there holding your hand and uh, transmit the energy directly. So there is obvious that is a transmission that goes beyond the distance, beyond the time. So you can look, watch in the recording and still get the, the bliss. But on your local, there is an additional component which is allows direct interaction, like me looking into your eyes and you looking at my eyes at the same time. Actually, we'll do it with closed eyes, but that's a good example. With open eyes, looking at each other, there is a feedback loop which can be amplified, right? And the same thing with with touching. When I touch you, there is a feedback loop which can be amplified. You feel me, I feel you. And there is a parent-child relationship, lover-lover relationship. Yeah, the second thing, I guess the main theme of the workshop is, is love, non-sexual love, asexual love. It's sexual in a way, but not sexually expressed love. I mean, all love is the same. It's just you can express it sexually and non-sexually. And um, <clears throat> just the same type of love, right? It's just the same energy. It's just the expression of it. So it will bring you in a state of love by inviting you to do it yourself, of course. You bring will you will come there to be in a bliss for five days, to be in love for five days, and then carry it with you back. And it's not personal, it's not love specifically to me or to Jim or to someone else there. It is uh, you being in a state of love. And then you can uh, keep connecting to us or you can connect to others, it doesn't really matter. It is, it's not, you don't own the other person. You don't. Uh, you, you don't have to have the connection. You already have us in yourself. It's uh, it's all about you. It's inner work. 
for you to uplift yourself in a state of bliss, coherence, coherence meaning all pieces of you are integrated together, integration, all working together in harmony, harmonizing. Coherence and harmonizing is pretty much the same thing. Resonating within you, with, with yourself. And uh, still being together physically is a great help with that. That illusion is illusion of life is pretty strong, pretty harmonious, pretty was it word well designed, and we are designed that illusion of the body is designed in such a way that when you meet other bodies of similar vibration, of similar intentions, we help each other and synergize, synergize, help each other in uplifting each other. So collective. In, in India it's called ashram, collective coming together in a sanctified place, in a sanctified, what's it was? In a sacred place is, uh, is, um, is he, somebody called who was supposed to be at the webinar, but I'm here alone, I don't know why they can't come, but uh, my Skype? Doesn't show any messages, and let me check my Facebook messages. Unfortunately, I don't know. There is no way to pause it, so bear with me for a second. Uh, I will uh, be back in a second. So I go to my Facebook. Yeah, Facebook sucks in many ways, but uh, it sucks also pretty strongly. So. I couldn't find anything better on Facebook in terms of communicating. It's not my choice. It's uh, just people chose to be chose to be uh, accessible on Facebook. So it's it's a, it's your choice to be there. I just found that more are there, so I just followed along. And the function wise, it's it's acceptable. There is there is lots of distractions, like the um, how do you call it? the uh, pop-ups? You can block all of them easily, not easily. You know, with with uh, determination, you can block things. No, it's quiet. It's quiet. All right. So that person that called, I don't know why that he called. He possibly wanted to get into the webinar, but you know, how can I help? During the webinar, I'm not supposed to just, you know, call him back and invite him next time. So you know how to find me. Human code or jump, click on the link. You'll be here. It's it's. I'm I'm not broadcasting live just because of the quality of the sound. My voice works best with the high quality of the sound. Jim's voice is so great he can speak with poor microphone, and poor recording, low quality. But if I record locally on my computer, locally. I can get higher quality of the sound, like double the quality, double the volume of the file, because internet just doesn't pass that amount of good quality, or I mean, there is no good system which does it. And then I upload, so that's basically for, for you to understand what I speak. Sorry for, you know, it's not on the accent, it's something in my timing. Um, I exist in some time space which is not well aligned with the time on Earth. And I, I, I noticed that other Ashkenazi Jews, not all of them, but there are many Ashkenazi Jews that have the same timing issue. So there is something about the timing which is not quite fit on earth. Say, so when I'm singing, I, f I hear myself singing in tune, but when I hear the recording, there is a discordance, with, with, like I shift in time. So it's, it requires me special attention to stay in that earth time <laughs> connected to the earth time, to that imaginary, illusionary flow of things and kind of plug into the time. Same thing with calendar and stuff. It's art, but it's uh, manageable. All right. So, you know, today nobody came. Is it my timing wrong or there is a technical issue or is it they just forgot or 
I blame it all on August. August is coming and August is just not a good time. We always have a drop of people. People just don't got, come to the webinar. There is, the energies are not appropriate for that. So I take it easy. I need to learn to be able to speak without the audience. It's part of the learning to be a good teacher. I need to be able to produce webinars which are good, well charged, well uh, helping you understandable without the audience prompting me with questions. I can ask questions myself, right? So let's uplift the energy again. Mm Everyone, every time when I do the noise, I, not every time, but often I um, recall the song by Beatles, I Want You, I think it's from Abbey Road, and there, um, when I spoke to John Lennon, I asked him, what did you mean there, what did you mean, why did you say you're so heavy and he said um, because um, she was heavy because she was pregnant and um, and um, and also her appearance was heavy she had a heavy spiritual vibration, much heavier, which was really hard to, to bear. And there, there is like that extreme desire, extreme, extreme maybe lost, lost. And uh, the person going nuts, going crazy with desire. And then, and then there is like, they inserted, I don't remember how many minutes, maybe five minutes of white noise at the end of the song, just to get you so high that there is no music anymore left, it's just white noise. And this noise is so charged with the spirit. It's just this thing which allows you, I guess it allows you to shift in this, this space when you hear something 
uh, spiritual without their because the the music the note it uh, it is limiting you right the music is limiting you to certain borders certain vibrations so you only can be only in that limited area of space which is defined by music but white noise is so so random that you can it can play have tons more in it if you are able to receive it it can transmit more but you know it's also so random that anything can be there so if you are attracted to high attracted to the high vibration you can shift high if you're attracted to low vibration it, it lets you down so it's you can go anywhere in white noise it's it's white noise it's uh, it's like vacuum or light or white light or whatever it's uh, undefined but you can charge it with something so so that's why I like uh, that's how I associate that white noise is carrying lots of information and it is more than that it's just kind of one of the ideas there <laughs> What else is important? Uh, lots of other things happen in my life. It's just a part of it. But a part of it is me exploring and designing the new understanding how to teach, how to bring people together. Understanding that, you know, receiving the message that we need to come together. We need to network. One thing we are doing great, it's unique Hukula community, which is networking online. but now it's time to network locally, right? Locally. And in San Diego, I uh, network locally, but with limited success, I would say. It's like waves of success and then psh, there is no continuous flow. But I meet great light workers and uh, people into aliens, they just come together in nice places. So I learned C5. Close Encounters 5, you basically sit in the, under the stars. It's called Stephen Greer's Protocol, but simplistically it's meditating, inviting the aliens, and really preparing yourself for meeting them. So when they come, right, would you explode, run away, get too excited, get crazy? It can be uncomfortable when they come. When, Couple times when they came, I had experience when they came. Couple times, and it was uh, not that pleasant. It was uh, my worst nightmares. Not the physical nightmares, but the sensation of nightmare was well there, well there, like sickness, nightmare, and why? It's not because of them being dirty. It's because of you being dirty, right? So, contain your dirt. When you do meditation, inviting the aliens, contain your dirt. Like, you can't really get rid of it. It's you, right? Just contain it in a proper place and don't let it explode. Because 
That's what Bashar explains. When you are not ready, and we come, they come, the aliens, people just are overwhelmed with the darkness which is leaking out of containers. So, jar, put in a jar, put a lid on a jar. Right? Put a lid on a jar. Contain your negativity. Don't allow it to spill. And pre-program yourself. Decide in advance what you are going to do when aliens come. I guarantee we will be physically there, some of us, right? If things happen right, we will be physically. We plan to be physically there. But I can't guarantee the aliens will be physically there. But I had experience with Star Wars that they respond from the sky. They, you kind of, you, you laser, shine a laser saying, hey, are you there? A laser pointer. And then in, in response, they start blinking in response from the sky. At least that was my experience. That was uh, pretty reproducible. If you go, go in good meditation, and the sky is clear, which is, you know, raining is not very well conducive for sky watch, but uh, they call it, uh, you can even do sky watch in the daylight and you can invite the aliens in the daylight. It's all about the state of mind and they can appear physically locally or they can appear in your senses. Uh, they can uh, touch you, they can be inside of you, they can be inside your head. So there is a lot of communication happens in these group meditations. So for the people who are coming, I hope some of you who are watching will be the ones which are coming. I will post it in the group of uh, workshop group. We have Ascension workshop, Hukula group, where people who are coming, I added them to this group. So I'll post it there. So the idea is... to pre-program yourself, right, to be uh, ready for them and don't get too excited. So basically the program is don't get too excited. Be ready for the contact, accept them as they are. And of course you will decide if you want to continue or not, but decide in advance that, you know, if they don't harm you physically, if they have good intentions, then you would not run away screaming, right? That's the key. And you wouldn't even get positively excited. So you don't really jump on them and hug them unless they are ready for that. If they're ready for that, of course, they would be great for, for hugging. Like if you jump, jump on a Liran, first ask them not to push too hard because they can crush you. They're a little bit too strong. But others like Pleiadians and human looking ones, uh, some of them are okay with hugging, especially if they have protective suits, invisible protective suits. I never seen the alien and I never seen a UFO nearby, only the flashes in the sky. But I experienced them otherwise. So for those of you who will be there, the principle is um, it's a silent meditation. So first we do like harmonium meditation, la 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 la. We tune into their uh, med guided meditation state, but then it's a silent meditation and you keep silent and you not only keep silent physically you also keep silent relatively silent in your mind and stay positive and don't get too excited about anything it's like being in the receiver mode you invite them first you send out the invitation and then uh, curb your negativity curb your fear curb your negativity curb your uh, destructive thoughts and depressive thoughts just kind of stay in, in a balanced stay in the balance receivers receiving space receiving place accepting place receptive mode receptive mode and that relates to the whole workshop um, Help us, you know. I know I'm not. I know I'm imperfect, right? I'm trying to be better, but um, also I don't. I don't want to lose myself, right? So some idiosyncrasies, some uh, fears and incompatibilities are there just because of the self-protection. 
And also, of course, I... I'll, I'll come back to that idea. Of course, I'm pretty perfect, but um, my intention is pure to help you to bring light workers together and help us to meditate, receive the instruction, channel together, do telepathic practice together, Reiki practice, and to be a clear channel, good channel for the spiritual divine bliss, right? So even an imperfect teacher can be a good channel for the bliss. And same with Jim. Jim is, I know Jim is in higher vibration. I feel jealous about that. But what can you do? You can only go your path and, uh, and that's it. Stay in your path. So, <clears throat> so for me, it's also an opportunity to plug into the bliss of Jim. And together we can create a, a special vortex of bliss and do some grid work. So the grid work. Okay, I need to kind of choose where to go. So grid work I will put a few minutes later. Now, one of the biggest fears, and I think it's a, it's a pretty practical fear, is that things will go wrong and people start fighting and people start speaking and people will create factions and uh, they will say that Max, you are not good. Jim is better. Uh, how about Max, you just you know set up the microphones and shut up, right? <clears throat> and that's a very valid suggestion, I would say. I appreciate that suggestion as well. Uh, that's why it's so fear feared, right? So the plan is, and also Jim shifted from from old Jim to his new Jim. Old Jim was I forget who who, who he remind me who he who was his <laughs> okay who was his uh, previous higher self. Now he switched to Elijah new higher self and the previous one was one of the ancient ones. <clears throat> so, so Jim is different now, but whatever the spirits want, we'll, we'll comply and cooperate. They want us together, we'll uh, teach together, right? Um, so I will help you to be together with Jim, I'll help myself to be together with Jim, I'll help each other to shift to the new state. And um, so my, my approach is a practical, simple, like I will just pass the microphone around and um, I ask everybody to cooperate. And we'll have organizers who are more coherent together. So Jim, I, Angie, Mark, and uh, also guests will be there for a short while, Jamie. So we are organizing that. And Astrid, unfortunately, she is not coming, but she is the main uh, mastermind behind all the logistics. So, so we'll be missing her. I, I, I invite more help, and that help has to be has to be non-confrontational. I invite all non-confrontational help. Is it fair? I guess. Yeah, I invite all non-confrontational help. I mean, I will everybody to work together. We're not getting profit from that. And if there is any few dollars left after that, that would be a miracle. But also there is a possibility that I will have to put my money to, to just to pay for the things. So if there are any dollars left, we'll use it for the Hukola and next workshop. And just easier when you can pay the speakers. That's easier to do. So money-wise, it was a huge decision. I made it not long time ago, maybe three, four months ago to allow money into Hukula and uh, it closed certain doors but it opened certain other doors so you know doing workshop is one of the 
things which became possible when we, when we allowed money into Hukula. We sort of subscribed to the old money Orion Empire idea of exploitation, draconian idea of exploitation. Uh, we allowed that dirt into Hukula, but it opens the old traditional ways which are still working on Earth. That illusion is still using money, the Earth illusion. That experiment is still in uh, <clears throat> largely, you know, the economy is still working through the money. So I apologize, but it, you know, to make the workshop, we needed the money. To keep the things going, we need some sort of money. So it seems to be working reasonably well. Like <clears throat> the amount of <clears throat> effort we put in the workshop. is so big like uh, the organizers will put so much effort it's it cannot be measured in money it's just uh, measuring it in money is just uh, incorrect what's that word uh, blasphemy yeah measuring our effort in money is blasphemy i guess that's how you say it blasphemy i don't know anyway um but for me, it's uh, not because of this specific workshop. It is because because of me transforming into the new capacity, into the new role, and being able to teach. And uh, so it's not one workshop, it's multiple workshops. So that's the idea. It's not a single workshop. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I came back to the idea of Sedona and other places. So it has to be close to airport, and the desire from people was to be in the hotel. So being in the hotel is uh, a different vibration, but the advantage is we don't have to rent, pay for the rooms in advance. We kind of negotiate a good rate and then let you pay for your room, and then it's much easier. We just pay for the one uh, hole where we, like, Call the classes, which would hold whatever, 40 people, 40 people in the hotel. And then we are independent on weather, and we don't have to pay, so money-wise it's simpler. So, like, maybe even if we have 10 people, maybe it will still be feasible. Like, for this camp, it only becomes feasible if it's around 24. Otherwise, we just... You know, then we raise the prices, and we raise the prices. People don't come, so it's 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 a very delicate balance. We made the miracles by placing a lot of effort in saving your money. We made it possible to happen. But once it starts rolling, it's much easier. When it's already we have experience. Uh, next one it will be easier. I think we'll be able to do it in the hotel, and it might be even comparable price. Airbnb sucks in a way that. I want all people to be together, and in Airbnb we can, you know, one one house can have only four rooms, so it's good for smaller workshops, maybe ten people. But then, ten people cannot pay for the air ticket, right? It's just, it just the math the, the math doesn't work. So, if you need 24 people and it's multiple houses, then you know where do we come together? And usually we don't have one big room, so. It's a mess, and the air condition might be a problem, and um, so Airbnb is not a good, I don't see how it is working, it's not working yet. When it becomes like even bigger than Airbnb, you, know, you are free to stay in Airbnb, but then you have to take care of your own uh, uh, lodging and stuff. So I don't know, I think hotel is good so far. Food in hotel sucks big way, right? So then we have to figure out the catering. But uh, finding a hotel in, uh, in the Phoenix, Arizona, I think it's easy, very easy. And the price would be good in the winter, I'm pretty sure. Maybe around Mount Shasta, but then everybody has to fly. So I need to find out where the people are located. So most of the people, to my surprise, to that uh, upstate workshop, most of the people come by driving. So I need to figure out where you are. So we can then uh, find a place where you can drive like five hour drive is decent maybe new york city i don't know new jersey <laughs> i don't consider that but if you can drive to new jersey you also can drive to rochester but roads in that time of the in in december roads are nightmare in uh, new jersey rochester area it could be like snow and then we 
have to cancel and it's just a nightmare. So let's do it somewhere in the south. Hawaii is pretty good, but then, you know, who can afford Hawaii? Uh, Canada, and can you go to Canada? I love Canada. Maybe next summer, maybe spring workshop in Canada. <sighs> what did I want to speak about? That was a topic which I pushed away. All right, I guess I forgot about it. It's nice to have an audience to remind you about your topics. Okay, um, so channeling practice. You, you see our channeling classes. They are, uh, you have practice. That's pretty standard. We'll uh, have the audience, we'll have a circle of people. 25 people can sit in the circle pretty comfortably. We'll have a speaker. Two of us, Jim and I, sit and I have the harmonium. And, um, and then we will divide you, like we'll have helpers who divide you into groups of three. And you just turn your chairs together, form the group of three, like triangles. And each group has one person channeling to two others. And then we, in one hour, we can do, everyone can channel. You see? And Jim and I will, will be with you helping. I guess we'll just sit together with you and help you. But before that, you'll have instruction. Before that, you'll have initiation and questions, answers. So it will be... You will be prepared for that, and then we'll have the practice. And ha I have participated in such practices, and hey, they, it's really helpful, like to be able to face to face, locally, physically, to 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 do psychic reading, telepathy, channeling, healing, Reiki, galactic Reiki healing. So we'll do all of that. And the last thing I wanted to say. I need to do a little chant before that. was um, stay positive first thing and last thing stay positive don't allow yourself to slide down during these five days be friendly to everyone especially to the ones who are disturbed and who the ones who feel shy and isolated try to help them respect the space of Respect if somebody is meditating, you don't have to hug them and shake them and uh, force them to laugh, right? But if somebody is shy, try to bring them to the group. So there are people who are uh, extroverts or 
will practice and socialize, and so they socialize. Face outside, bring people in, speak one on one in comfortable. Some people are not comfortable to speak into large groups, so maybe just one on one, speak to them, bring everybody together, help everyone, and introduce everyone to one. So, 24 people can form one to one. I don't know how many, but lots of connections. It could be square, square, 24 squared, most likely. 24 squared number of connections. Can multiply. Anyway, like around a thousand or something. Um, so, uh, I know from my experience that people tend to bring up your troubles and uh, some people are so much focused on negative side of life, uh, empty side of the cup cup, and the um, glass, glass is empty and so on, half empty. So uh, bring up politics, sicknesses, do that, it's okay, but don't leave it there. Do two things to any topic. If you bring up in your discussions any topic of the darkness, like dirt, sickness, disgust, politics, money, anything, do two things. One, uplift it, uplift it, uplift it. Do a positive effort. Positivize. Do be a positive machine. Make a positive effort. How does that make you feel? And how do you transform it in your heart? How do you transform it in your life? Do that transformational effort. Don't leave it hanging there. Like some people just drop a lot of dirt around and keep it there. No, if you raise, raise a topic in your discussions about negativity, like the prices are high, the houses, you know, the mortgage, the credit system is in the trouble, financial system. What should we do about it? What should the world be like global thinking, like global thinking? If you think globally, don't think globally negatively, right? Okay, so first thing, make it positive. It's okay to bring up I prefer high top, high vibration topics, but if you bring up the negative topic, uplift it, right? Uplift it. And second, give it a spiritual alien four dimensional dimension. Uplift it and give it dimension. Like yes, sickness. What's the karmic value of it? Yes, finances. What is the role of light workers in it? What's the role of aliens in it? Because uh, my experience is that if you don't do that, it just drags everybody down. So I cannot be like so much prohibitive. I just am one of organizers. I'm keeping it semi-democratic, semi. So I respect the respect the desires of others. You have to be home there. So it's not that I dictate you, but if it was my uh, if it was a different situation, that I would prohibit any negative discussions. But here I would say, I ask you, like it's more like I ask you, I suggest don't allow negative discussions. If you bring up mainstream topics, make sure to uplift them. Don't have them drag you down. That's it. All right. With that, I bless you and I give you the last chant. Let's make a devotion of the chant. Okay, um, we have a dragon energy around, and it's pretty funny, funny. Uh, dragons, on one hand, they're so narcissistic, narcissistic, they cannot talk about anything which is not dragons, right, narcissistic, they only look inside, the world around them is just a mirror which reflects themselves, so they look only at themselves. They are not interested in anything non-dragon, right? So, you know, flowers are beautiful and so are dragons, right? <laughs> Finances sucks. 
but drug is not great. Okay, so that kind of logic on drug. But on on the positive side, on the positive side, the dragons are example of self love, right? Which is a good example for all, all of us. They, you know, you cannot offend a dragon really. You cannot really. Uh, it's really hard to make a dragon dislike themselves. They have so wide protection of self love that. They don't worry about how do they look. Don't worry about how other people, how other people think about them. Not as much. They think about them, but but they are so positive about themselves that, you know, it's it's a good lesson for all of us. So, welcome the dragon in yourself. That part of the dragon, self love, and also they are pretty good in uh, conflict. Good warriors. Good organizers good uh, leaders because there is so much self-love that it kind of expands and and uh, expansion is another another property of the drug and also they are very good in recovery so they can be defeated but then they come back and they come back in self-love and self containment self integrity and coherence so so it's easier to work with dragons because because they are so rich in their energy and self self love energy and it's and they also our ancestors so all of us have that okay so I will praise and bless and when I speak about dragons all candles came when they went down I I'll do a dragon blessing. Um, I bless the dragon energy. I accept part of it, part of it, but I still prefer to be human, and prefer it's my choice. They respect choice. You know, you can reject. You know, you cannot fight them if they're too strong, but you, they respect your choice. So my choice is to be human, and my choice to have only part of the dragon energy cherished and acknowledged, and the rest we choose to restrict restrict so we restrict our narcissism we restrict the idea of dominance we cherish the idea of partnership and networking and equality which is not favorite things of dragons and democracy which is not favorite things of dragons and tribal idea which is not favorite thing of dragons so brotherhood over empire so i praise and honor the dragons but here they choose brotherhood over empire. Thank you. 
All right. Have a good day. Thank you for listening. If you listen to that the whole two hours, that would be hmm, a miracle. Okay. Thank you and talk to you later.